and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to talk about a Hampton University outreach to the Hispanic community. My guest is Almarie Munley. Welcome. Thank you, Robin. You know, people have stereotypical images of Hampton University and they think African American, which is true for a large proportion of the student body. But this is a new initiative that's multicultural, which actually is Hampton's heritage. Yes, it is. It's exciting, Robin. This is actually the vision and the brainchild of Dr. Harvey. He has had a, a long history of thinking about how to leverage education broader than just the African American community. Well, these days, I mean, maybe not quite as much in Hampton Roads, but it's growing. But when you think of populations mm -hmm. that are somewhat disadvantaged or who need mm -hmm. additional support to get education, it is logical to think of the Hispanic community. Absolutely. The Hispanic community is one of the fastest growing communities nationwide. And here in Hampton Roads, we have a very interesting makeup or demographic for the Hispanic community. Uh, we've got the seven cities or the Tidewater mm -hmm. cities. And within that, Newport News is the fastest growing city for the Hispanic community. Wow. Um, so it's a very interesting map when you look at it. Um, and I'm going to say, when we say Hispanic community, it isn't one community. Right. It isn't one population. I mean, your background is, why don't you tell us? Yes, I'm from Guatemala, Central America. I came here about 17 years ago, and I plugged in right into that community. But when you plug into that community, you have people from the Caribbean, from South America, from all over Latin America, all over the United States. Um, and that's an interesting point you make, Robin, because it's not just limited to a certain group or language. You know, Hispanics, some may not even speak Spanish, right. but they are linked to that community culturally. Uh, we have uh, a larger uh, group um, in the south of the United States, you know, Florida, right, a, right. a very strong Cuban American community, and in Texas, the various groups between Chicanos and uh, the, you know, the, the Tex-Mex and the Mexican Americans, and, um, and interesting enough, in California, El Salvador has a high, dense uh, population of um, immigrants coming from El Salvador to to California. So there's an interesting disbursement of who we are across the nation, and here in Hampton Roads, we represent that. And it's so, so it's exciting. very diverse here. And yes. What are the barriers to education for this population? Language, there's, legal status? Yes, there's several. Language can be one of them. You have first-generation borns uh, uh, where there might be that um, uh, Spanish-English, uh, mm -hmm. not so much Spanglish, but there is that Spanish-English, and you have to... Uh, target that group by providing services that are both in in Spanish and in English. Then you have legal matters as well. But what's great is we have the Dreamers Act now, and we've got some students who are taking advantage of that, who are able to continue their education while all that legal issue is being vetted. And so um, we have some outstanding individuals in the Hispanic community who want to pursue education. And the government is well aware of that. You know, our states are well, well aware of that. And our institutions, just like Hampton University, is well aware of that. They want to support the growth of the community and offer education programs that serve the community. And you do that in a variety of ways. So it could be your typical high school graduate who's going to enroll for four years and, um, and be more of a traditional student, but you also have evening, weekend, flexible programs for people who need to continue working while they get that education. Yes, we do. We have several offers that we can make for an individual who comes in, um, it, even a non-Hispanic, but a Hispanic person can come in and say, you know, I want, I'm, I've, I've just um, uh, immigrated to this country or possibly I've lived in this country and I haven't gotten an opportunity to get my high school education. So we well, will so you work on that too. We'll, we'll be okay. working on that too. That's a, a development that we're in. 
because we find that there's a lot of professionals in this country that would like to continue on with their education and need that high school diploma to get them into that next phase, second post-secondary mm -hmm. or higher ed. So the GED is an essential piece that's very popular and um, there's a, a lot of need for that. The other piece of the programs is language. While we have the Spanish speakers wanting to learn the English, we have a lot of English speakers who want to integrate into the Hispanic community. So it's a transferable thing. It's, it's really quite a nice exchange because while there is the Spanish learning, there is the ling English learning. Um, and then we've got particular degree programs, for example, in this Hispanic initiative at Hampton that are going to target the community. Um, entrepreneurship is one. Uh, people in the Hispanic community and beyond are seeking to start their own businesses, um, you know, become their own business, uh, leverage some of their own skill, and um, that is one area that we find that there's a need to train, to develop, and provide programs to support um, that growth. So that's really helpful because yes. I think that's been true, not you know universally, but uh, immigrants when they come to this country, they're very hardworking. They have yes. ideas about uh, business startups, but it's got to be very hard to figure out all the technicalities and the laws and the banking and finance and things like that. You know, you say, Robin, that is so critical. We have to understand the community. And a lot of times what will happen is if you don't understand where to go, how to go, what to do, you'll just shut down or you just say, you know, this is not for me. So our initiative is providing services that will redirect people, will advise them, will help them find that niche, that they find trust and confidence in what they're trying to get to. And that comes really with an intentionality. You can't just tell someone, you know, come in, well, but if you tell them come in in Spanish, in English, and you have people that identify with their community, um, there's a trust factor there that builds. And now there's confidence, you know, I can do this. Yes, I can do this. I know that I can do You're this. You're sort of examples. So, right, yes, and right now we're on a campaign where we have a tagline, um, esto si lo sé, this I know. And that's a very powerful tagline for our community because it gives that affirmation that I know it, that I can, that I can do it, I can fulfill it. I can accomplish it. And so that's very attractive. I, I want to be a part of that. And um, we have a beautiful staff of people that we're putting together, a team to serve this program. Uh, currently, we have a director who is on board with us now, just uh, recently started. Um, her name is Miss Thalette, and she's doing a, a fantastic job. And we're going to continue to build that team in order to serve the community. How do you reach this audience? Because, you know, traditional media is having a hard time anyway, but, but to make inroads with, you know, a niche community, yeah. it, it probably doesn't work. <laughs> uh, you're right. Traditional media, while here in Hampton Roads, is primarily English. Uh, you may not see a lot of advertisement that combines that culture, mm -hmm. uh, the Hispanic culture with the English language. Um, one interesting piece, I don't know if you, uh, we all watch the Super Bowl, right? And I was so excited when I watched the Super Bowl this year because for once in I don't know how many years in this part of the world of Hampton Roads, there was advertisement directed to the Hispanic community and to oh, those interested wow. in that community. It was about avocados from Mexico. It was great. Cool. And I thought, now we're getting it, you know. So while we're getting it, that particular group and the Hispanic group has been very mobile. So we find that mobility and anything in mobile apps is very attractive. We love to exchange pictures. We love Facebook. We love the Twitter. Um, as a matter of fact, before I came on the show, I was talking to you about that verb we use in mm -hmm. Spanish, uh, chatear. You know, we like to talk on the phone, but we use the word chat in Spanish, and we translate it to a verb, and we say chatear. 
So when I'm gonna talk to you, Robin, and I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna chatear with you, <laughs> it's because I'm gonna text you or I'm gonna be in this mobile communication with you. And so chatting could chatting, mean any yeah, different any, way to any, connect. Right, it can mean Facebook, Twitter, anyway, but I'm in this mode of communication with you using an English word into a Spanish uh, verb form, and now we chateamos, we all <laughs> And that really chat. speaks yeah. to the yes. crossover of the cultures. It too, does. That English, Spanish, yes. Spanish, English. Absolutely, so if we begin to target our, not just our advertisement, but just the way we communicate, we become attractive. People will listen. You know, they hear because the word. Because you're where they're yes. already yes. listening. Uh, yes, and they hear a word, oh, chatear, I know that. I want to do that. And who's doing that? And so, you know, those types of things, those those catchy words that are part of the community are helpful in reaching out, you know, to, to the community. Well, and I think community is, is such a key word mm -hmm. here because when you help reach one person, if it is a close community, if they have friends and family, it can it can spread. They, yes. There's connections, yeah. and the personal connection has got to help. Ab and you, you uh, center on something very critical about the Hispanic community. We are a family-driven community. We love relationship. We're highly collectivistic. I know those terms sound so theoretical, but it really is that way. We love to be around people. We, we are family-driven, and so while I'm getting a degree, for example, I'm inviting my grandmother, my grandfather, my aunt, my uncle, everybody, aunts, uncles, my mom, dad, everybody to participate. So we have high participation with family members. And, and that's uh, of great value when you're out there reaching that community. You want to express that your family is important to us as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, we need to wrap up, but if people want to know more, if they want to help you spread the word, maybe they know people in the community, they are in the community, what is the best way? The best way is to come to our Hampton University website, hamptonu.edu. Mm -hmm. Go to our university college um, a page where we will have a designated space for the Hispanic Latino Initiative. As a matter of fact, if you go on our webpage today, there is a tagline right at the top of our main page that says uh, Hispanic Latino Initiative. You wanna go there, you'll find an address, you'll find a phone number. Uh, we're going to uh, start some information sessions. We had one just this past week, we're gonna do a few more. And so you wanna to come to be a part of those okay. to get learn further, a bit more. learn more bring about some the people yes. with you, as you That's said. right, bring your family members, mm -hmm. bring everybody with you. Uh, we are going to be launching part of this initiative from the Newport News, from the city of Newport News, um, in a building in Newport News. So that will be uh, coming up here in a few short weeks, hopefully. So um, it's a great opportunity. What a, a wonderful opportunity for Hampton, for the city of Hampton. For the city of Hampton. That's right. And, you know, it's, it, it culturally yes. enriches the city as well. Yes. When you have more people and they participate and come together. Yes. We all learn yes, and have fun. Education is gold, Robin. Education mm -hmm. is everything. And we know that in the Hispanic community. We value that highly. And entrepreneurship oh, goes yes. right along with yes. that. That's the whole trend of, yes. you know, especially the younger folks yes. these days. They don't want a boss necessarily. Right. They want to figure it out. They want to figure and it out. And it changes lives. Their own. You right. know, we change lives with education. So Hampton has such a great um, opportunity with this initiative. We are so excited to collaborate with the city of Hampton and, and beyond to make this a, a great situation for all of us. Great, well that yeah. sounds wonderful. Good. Thank you thank for coming you. by and telling us about this. Yes. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative to you. And if you know someone in the community and can help spread the word, the classes, the coursework varies in intensity and different levels. So there's something there for everyone. Thanks for watching.